Hey everyone, it's Amanda. Welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm doing a video that you've all been waiting for patiently. I'm doing my 2019 bullet journal flip through. Yay! I cannot tell you how many times a day I get requests for this video. <laughs> Even like months ago when it was only halfway through the year, I was still getting comments to do my 2019 bullet journal flip through. But now that the year is finally beginning to wrap up, I can flip through and look back at my completed bullet journals this year. It's gonna be really fun. I always love doing this anyways. Like I look at my old spreads for inspiration for myself and also just to see like the progression. It's really fun. So um, I do have a bullet journal flip through for every single year that I've bullet journaled, 2017 and 2018. So I'll link those down below. And I know I'm gonna get a lot of comments about this. My 2020 bullet journal setup is coming soon. It's gonna be after this video. So stay tuned for that. I know a lot of you guys are excited about that to see how I set things up for the new year. But this video is not about the new year. It's about looking and reflecting on the past we're gonna be flipping through everything. I'm not gonna stop at every single page, but I will sort of talk through my thoughts and maybe stop at pages that I think are really important. So hopefully you guys enjoy. Before we begin flipping through everything, I just wanted to give a quick thank you to today's sponsor, Skillshare. You guys already know that Skillshare is a big friend to the channel. I love working with them. I have a class on there. I learn from there. They're just really awesome. Um, I'll talk more about them later in the video, but without further ado, I know you've all been waiting for this, so let's get started. All right, so here they are. Here are my bullet journals for 2019. This is basically my entire life. You're about to see a glimpse into the inner workings of Amanda Rachel Lee as a human being. Whenever I do these flip throughs, I do feel very vulnerable and exposed because you guys are really seeing into my mind. But um, yeah, I had to split it up into two notebooks this year pretty much down exactly half of the year, like last year. I actually have last year's with me as well. This is from 2018. It's really interesting to see all of them together. This was 2017. So here you go, this is three years of bullet journaling. Look at all of this. These are like archives. <laughs> anyway, we're not talking about the past, we're talking about this year. I'm excited to look back at all of the pages with you guys. So let's start off with the first half of the month, which is this notebook. A lot of you guys will have already seen these initial pages in my 2019 bullet journal setup video, but I think it'll be interesting for you guys to see them all filled in. And also I'll talk about pages that worked for me, what I felt overall during this year while bullet journaling and stuff that I wanna change for next year. It's like for example, this grid spacing cheat sheet was something that I carried over from last year ever since I saw it by Pacific Notation on Instagram. And it's been life changing. Like. I don't know what I would have done without this grid spacing cheat sheet. It's so, so convenient for setting up weekly spreads. I do get a lot of questions about how to use this page and maybe I'll do a separate video on it, but basically you just have the numbers of the dot grid spaces going across and then you have various divisions on the page. Like if I wanna split up a page in two half, I can see that I need to count 13 spaces. So you'll see for this future log, I don't have these colored in and that's actually because this is sort of where I switched over into the next bullet journal. So I just um, migrated all of these tasks into the new one once I switched over. As I'm flipping through these initial pages, I'm really liking the simple sort of black and white style that I went for just for the beginning of the year setups. I think that's something that I'm gonna carry over till next year. So this is one of my all-time favorite pages. It's my year in Polaroids, and it's just kind of a fun way to uh, capture memories over the year. I did it last year and I really enjoyed it, so I carried it over into this year, and I definitely think I'm gonna do it again next year. Basically, every single Polaroid is my favorite memory from the month. And uh, I actually, this year I got a Polaroid printer, which was way more convenient because I didn't need to carry my Polaroid camera around with me all the time. I could basically just print out pictures from my phone for each month and that way I could choose my favorite memory from the month. So have them all in order. 
Um, and even though by the second half of the year I switched over into my new bullet journal, I just really enjoy the completed look. So I just kind of double printed them and I have a My Year in Polaroids as well for the second half of the year in the other notebook, but I'm gonna fill it in. There's obviously a blank space for December because December is not over yet. Something that I did this year was I actually put my video schedule on little sticky notes like this and later on I ended up using washi tape I think. And that's just because my video schedule tends to be pretty fluid depending on how long a specific video is taking so that way I can just peel it off and move it to a different day. This was from my Instagram followers control my weekly spread video, I think. I have more like random spreads like this where I would just like doodle and letter um, some video ideas. This is actually my favorite spread from January, I think. I just love the, the pattern and this layout, this specific layout where it is four columns and two rows became my favorite weekly spread layout this year, I think. And um, it makes a lot of sense because I ended up choosing this sort of format for my actual doodle planner merch. But I, in terms of general usage, I think it is the most efficient use of space, obviously depends on your schedule. But personally, I find that when I do a spread that's more vertical like this, it tends to be a little squishy, but you do get a lot more vertical space. And then if I do a more horizontal layout like this, I end up having to do two columns like so. So when I do a layout like this one, um, it's kind of the best of both worlds. So you'll see that I end up using this a lot throughout this year. February, I think, is one of my all-time favorite themes. I know I say that a lot. You guys always clown me in the comments about how much I say it, but I do think my top two from this year or February and then August, which you'll see soon. Oh yeah, here you can see again, the sticky notes that I used for my video schedule. I just used different colors depending on the theme of the month. And this one was really pretty because it matched the cherry blossoms. Oh, I forgot that I did a favorites page. I should bring this back. I like doodling stuff like this. Style-wise, in terms of the doodles, I think this was the most different style from the whole entire year because usually my doodles have a black outline but this i just use the colored markers and i really really like how it turned out over here i have my monthly focus <laughs> it's so funny merch get on it this was when i was like really sort of hammering down on getting all of the merch stuff it's actually so nice looking back at these pages especially from early in the year because i'm sort of gaining inspiration from myself my older self like i really like how this entire month looks and i'm gonna have to bring some of these elements and some of these trackers into some of my newer setup the leaf layout i really enjoyed and i love the mix of colors going on Oh yeah, so March was actually the first month that I started doing these monthly playlist spreads and I enjoyed it so much that I ended up continuing it pretty much for the rest of the year. And later on, I started making actual Spotify playlists with these songs on it so that you guys could listen to them as well. But I just really enjoyed sharing music and music and art and self-care and productivity kind of go hand in hand with me because I always listen to music whenever I'm planning or whenever I'm getting some work done. So every single month I sort of have a specific specific vibe and specific songs. So looking back at the songs that I was into at that time is kind of like a time capsule in itself. So it's kind of interesting.
As you can see, I didn't end up using the spring dump page at all, but because of this, you'll see that in later months, I change things around and I either don't make a brain dump page or I'll do a half page, or I'll just, you know, wait till I actually need one and then set it up, you know, in the middle of, of the week on a random page. But um, yeah, I mean, a lot of people get stressed about like not filling in your habit trackers or your mood trackers. And I've said this from the very beginning, I totally understand if trackers or artistic spreads like this is not your thing. There are so many other ways to bullet journal. This is just my personal way. Personally, I enjoy doodling or creating cute, fun setups like this because it sort of motivates me more and makes me more productive and also is like a active self-care when I just sit down and have some time to doodle or plan or be creative. So that's what works for me. But if you're struggling keeping up with your bullet journal, and I say that in quotes because I think a lot of people do get caught up in, you know, trying to make sure everything looks perfect, then I would recommend simplifying your layouts and going very, very minimal with it. That's totally fine as well, guys. I think this is my favorite weekly from April. A lot of these I did on live stream on Instagram, which was always a fun way for me to connect with you guys. Oh, here's my travel spread from Japan. One of my favorite trips from this year. There's a packing list here, uh, some recommendations of things that you guys told me to check out. And then I doodled obviously some stuff in here. As you can see, the layout that I mentioned earlier in January, I loved it so much that I recreated it for May. Ooh, June. <laughs> you guys know how much I love bubble tea and this theme was no exception. I wish I had bubble tea right now. That would be really great. But I loved all of the pastel colors and this was again, sort of like a style change up. I feel like it's, you know, a bit more quirky than normal because usually I don't use this many colors and I have like all the fun colored washi tapes going on as well with the multicolored lettering. Oh, and June was also my birthday. So I have like this birthday spread of 21 things that I've learned and things that I want to do before I turn 22. I actually haven't read this through since my birthday. So now that I'm looking at it, go to Korea, release merch, get a puppy. I mean, I did two of those things, have not gotten a puppy yet, unfortunately. Another layout that I really enjoyed doing this year was the Dutch door layout. And I think it's pretty much for the exact same reasons as um, this layout. It's because it's the perfect sort of size. You don't have to do two columns within a layout and it's not too skinny. The difference is that you just get the weekly events sidebar, whereas for here, I just put a line through the actual box and divided the events and tasks up within that box. This is my page where I was moving into my new bullet journal, which I have a whole separate video on, but uh, that was the first half of the year, guys. Wow, already made it through one. All right guys, just a super quick interruption for a word from today's sponsor, Skillshare. If you guys don't know what Skillshare is, they're an online learning community with thousands of classes in illustration, lettering, design, technology, whatever you can think of, there's probably a class on there. Throughout the past year, I've been mentioning some of the classes that I've been taking and it's honestly been so, so awesome just learning new things in a really accessible way, just like from home on my computer uh, and also improving the skills that I already have. So I always like to set some sort of learning goal for 2020 like this year was languages and next year I really really want to get back in to traditional painting like oil painting and 
watercolor and acrylic. So Skillshare is definitely gonna be coming in handy. I am going to be taking a bunch of classes. Something that I absolutely love is that Skillshare is really passionate about accessible and affordable learning. So their premium membership will give you unlimited access to all of their high quality classes and an annual subscription costs as low as $10 a month. Uh, you know, give yourself the gift of knowledge and learning for the new year or maybe you, you can gift it to someone else. Honestly, a Skillshare subscription would be such an awesome gift for someone who like likes to learn and wants to try new things. I think that would be great. So if you guys do wanna check it out for yourself while also supporting my channel, you can click the link in the description box below for a free two month trial. All right, back to the flip through. Moving on to the second half of the year, which we are still currently in. Again, with the grid spacing cheat sheet, I cleaned it up a little to make it a bit easier to read, but I did still keep it on this side of the page at the very, very beginning so that I, you know, it's really easy to refer to. So this is my future log for the second half of the year. I had some mid-year goals and some bucket list things. I actually ended up transferring some of my bucket list goals from this page. So this was the first half of the year I did a 100 things to do before 2019 ends. And the stuff that I hadn't done by the time I transferred into this new notebook, I moved it over into this bucket list. So that's why you see some repeats. This was a new page that I did when I transferred over into this notebook. It was a songs to learn page and I loved it. If you guys don't know, I play ukulele, piano and guitar sometimes. And I always think whenever I listen to a song, like, oh, I should learn this on ukulele or I should learn this on piano. And then it always escapes me once I sit down and I wanna do a little jam session. So it was nice to have a place to jot down songs that I wanted to learn whenever I was thinking that while listening to a song or something, because then once I sat down to have my you know, music jam session, I could just open up to this page and choose a song that I want to learn how to play. Here's the 2019 Polaroid Memories page. As I mentioned in the other book, uh, I actually had the the later months as well, but I just redid it in this book and it worked out anyways because the later half of the year was extremely busy for me, so I ended up having more than one favorite memory anyway, so I printed out a bunch of them. Since two pages could fit eight Polaroids, these bottom two were just random ones and then I have a space left for December that I still need to do once December is over. All right, so we have arrived at July. This tracker was actually fun to do because I filled it in with patterns rather than different colors. Typically I'll assign a mood to a darker color or a lighter color, but for this one, it was patterns. So it was fun to fill this one in. I know I'm saying this a lot, but <laughs> this is actually one of my favorite weekly spreads from the entire year. I don't know what, why I thought of doing this like wavy page thing for the Dutch door, but I just really love how it turned out and it's very satisfying to me that no matter where I turned it, and it's very satisfying to me that no matter where I turn the little middle flap, it like lines up perfectly. <sighs> Guys, please appreciate this with me. <laughs> Okay, so this is where I swatched my washi tape. I have a whole video on it. I probably shouldn't have done it in my bullet journal, but I didn't want to start a new notebook. I think for future, I'm gonna find a file folder or like maybe start a new notebook with my washi tape swatches. It was nice to have a place to look through my whole collection and choose one that I wanted to use. But obviously in the future, I don't want to bring out my 2019 bullet journal in order to see what washi tapes I have. You'll see that I have a lot of pages like this where I was jotting down some random thoughts about my planner launch. Because it was so hectic, I needed to, you know, just sort of spew out whatever I needed to keep track of. Funniest thing, when I made this uh, spread on, I think I made it on Instagram live stream, but I was like, this is so cute. And then everyone was like, Amanda, these look like bacon strips. And then now I can't unsee it. So whenever I look at this spread, I just think bacon strips. <laughs> 
mentioned earlier that August was one of my other favorite monthly setups this year. If you haven't seen the video, go check it out. I think I just really liked the lettering and the color combination and it was fun to experiment with this design style. But I will leave actually a whole playlist of every single setup from this year down below if you wanna do a little binge marathon session of 2019's videos. Oh my god, so here's my Korea spread. Uh, I ended up visiting Korea and it was an amazing trip, but just like the Japan trip, I did one of these spreads where I have like my packing list, things I wanna check out, restaurants and suggestions from you guys. And then I had my whole itinerary that I wanted to plan out and decorate it with cute little stickers. We're coming up on the end here. We are currently in October. October was so much fun because I got to play with this black paper and I love the look of it. I did a whole video about bullet journaling on black paper and I've been seeing a lot of people do their entire bullet journals in a black notebook, which I think is super, super cool. I don't know if I could commit to a full black notebook though. Here is November. This was a really busy month because this was during my planner launch. And I think I want to next year find a different monthly calendar layout setup. Um, just cause at certain times I did find it a little restricting. So maybe I will go back to the list layout, but again, I also didn't really enjoy doing that. So if you guys have any suggestions for monthly overview layouts, let me know. I've done the like standard bullet journal, I forgot what it's called, but just like the vertical list, but I didn't enjoy that. And then this, I don't, sometimes it doesn't work for me when I have a super busy month. And actually, if you have any other spreads that you have found has made a big impact in your productivity or your personal life or your mental health this year, definitely let me know down below because I'm curious and I'd love to add some new spreads to next year's layout because next year I want to try a bunch of new things and sort of switch things up a little just to experiment. You know, 2020, beginning of a decade, we might as well try something new. I was very, very busy. This is right in the thick of, of the launch here. And now we are at this month, December. So December is not completely finished yet, so I don't have all the layouts, but you can see I do have some going on here. Uh, and then I will finish it off. Obviously I'll post the last couple of spreads on Instagram, but I have, oh, I have my playlist again. And then I have an Amanda Claus video ideas page. I didn't actually do a full holiday bullet journal ideas video this year. I do have two from the past couple of years, but this is currently the only holiday spread that I have right now. I know I have this gifts planner that I actually made in one of my vlogs, but yeah, I have a, I have a lot of stuff to do as you can see. And then here's the final spread that I have for December. I think there's two more weeks of December left to go. So that'll take us right to the end of the notebook because as you can see, there is perfectly a couple pages left. Um, and I think 
Something else that I'm gonna do in these last couple of pages is sort of plan out how I want my 2020 bullet journal setup to go when I set up the brand new year. So I'm gonna make a little spread sort of outlining what pages that I wanna make, what changes that I wanna do and brainstorming certain ideas. So stay tuned for that because I know a lot of you guys are very excited for it. Hi guys, this is it. So. Overall, I would say I really enjoyed bullet journaling this year. I mean, I think it was a little different from 2018. This year, I really, really experimented with a lot of different styles. I think in 2018, a lot of the months were a very similar style. And you know, this year there was a lot of similar layouts, but the actual style I did try to switch up and I had a lot of fun with various things like watercolor and using black paper, especially in the later half of the year. Maybe I'll do something completely different for 2020. Who knows? Uh, honestly, I don't even plan out these things. I just kind of go with the flow. Flipping through this entire year of bullet journaling is making me very excited for 2020 because I have a lot of ideas and things that I want to do for next year, stuff that I want to change up. But again, if you have any, you know, suggestions or ideas, maybe themes, maybe layouts that you think I would enjoy, leave them in the comments below. But I hope you guys enjoyed looking through all of this with me. This right here is my entire year and my entire life uh, in a book. So I do feel a little bit exposed right now, but I hope you guys enjoyed it. Alrighty friends, so that was my 2019 bullet journal flip through. I hope you enjoyed looking through my entire life, essentially. <laughs> it's kind of like a time capsule. That's what I like to think of my bullet journals as. Every single year has different tasks and, you know, represents different versions of myself. So it's going to be really interesting looking back on these like 10 years into the future. You know, maybe I'll still be bullet journaling then, who knows? As I mentioned before, I know a lot of you guys are waiting for my 2020 bullet journal setup and it is coming very soon, so stay tuned for that. But uh, before I leave you, question of the day is which theme from this year, 2019, was your favorite? I'm very curious to know. I have my answer, but I wanna see your answers, so leave that in the comments below. And as usual, you can keep updated with me on social media. I'm at Amanda Richley everywhere. I think that's it. So as usual, keep doodling and I will talk to you in the next one. Bye everyone.